All right, we are going to go over Ohm's Law today. Now, we use Ohm's Law quite a bit to figure the uh, loads and all on our circuits. and uh, We also can, can do some troubleshooting with Ohm's Law, but when we see mathematical problems, it tends to scare us. And I want to try to ease a little bit of that fear as we go through some of the uh, basics of Ohm's Law here. We have a uh, big circle here with the with the uh, formulas that we, we need to apply Ohm's law, but I'm going to try to break this down and make it a little bit more simple. You notice that P stands for power. That's the amount of watts. That's the amount of work that's going to be done uh, done by a circuit. I stands for the current. It's measured in amperes. R is the resistance to the current flow, which is measured in ohms, and E is the electromotive force, which is measured in volts. Now, like I said before, you see the big pie up there with all the divisions and everything, and if you look at that, that's, well, it can be overwhelming. But let's break it down to the little triangles, and I'm going to start with this triangle over here where we have the E, the I, and the R. If you think of a seesaw, you can imagine E being on the pivot, which is your electrical, and I and R being on the sides of the seesaw. Now the reason I've, I've done that is because when one goes up, the other has to go down in order to continue to equal the E. In other words, it's I times R is equal to E. If I need to figure if, if I forget exactly what the formulas are, I can simply cover up the one that I want to find and it will tell me what to do. For example, if I want to find E, it's I times R. If I want to find R, it's E divided by I. And if I want to find uh, I, it's E divided by R. You can see how that is. I hope I said that right. <laughs> okay, but think of it this way. If this one goes down, this one's got to go up in order for the E to stay the same. And vice versa. If I goes up, then that means that R has gone down. So think of it as a seesaw there. Uh, if we go to the P, which is power, we can find out that that is equal to I times E. To break it down to make it look a little easier than this big circle, we know that E is equal to I times R. And there's our E right there. If we don't have E, we can take I times R and put it in its place of E. And when we compound, uh, put this together, we find out that is equal to I squared R. So in a roundabout way, we can actually do everything that's on this chart by these two triangles and not have to go into some of the square roots and things such as that. It may take more steps to do that, but if you don't want to try to memorize all this, and I can't be quite honest with you, I go back to the basic formulas and work it from there. Okay, we're going to move into some other videos here, but I think that's the basics for the Ohm's Law, and we'll apply this to some series parallel circuits a little later. Okay, Ricky. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the circle here. If you want to find P, then these formulas will help you do that. You have to look at what, what uh, 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 the characters do you have of the circuit. In other words, if I have I and R, I can come up with P by I squared R. If I have E and I, I can do the same thing. That's, that's uh, the same as this one right here but I times E is equal to P. If I have E, which is the voltage, E squared over R is equal to P. And it's the same way with the other uh, parts of the circle too. But these are what you're trying to find, and this is what will help you get there about knowing which ones that you do have. If you have two, two of these, you can figure out all the rest of it for any circuit. Okay. 